Intech MPT-7210A. This is how you set the settings on this charge controller. You could also call it a programmable DC-DC boost converter. That would be more accurate. Uh, nevertheless, it can be used to charge batteries and as a solar charge controller. So the first thing you'll see when you power it on is this display and it has default settings. I'm going to try to simplify it. This charge controller has a lot of uh, interesting uh, menus. Um, I'm going to show you how I set it up for my purpose. And that is to simply charge a electric lawnmower that I have. And it needs high voltage. It needs over 54 volts um, to fully charge the mower. My solar panels uh, only produce about 30 volts. So the first thing you would do is you would go to the menu, the settings menu. And as you see, there's a little icon there. It looks like a, a hard disk. And it has a, like an arrow and two numbers, zero, zero. I'm going to go ahead and point at it with this screwdriver. And that's simply the, the settings uh, groups. And there are several setting groups. I only use the first one, which is zero, zero. In order to access the settings, you would first press set. And you'll see it change to the setting group. I don't change that. Uh, you can change it if you want to. Then I'll press set again. So this is the tricky one. So this is supposed to be an MPPT charge controller. Uh, in actuality, it's a programmable DC-DC uh, boost converter. Now I'm not knocking the unit. It's wonderful. Works pretty good. Actually, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, but it really doesn't know how to find the maximum power point. Now that's not a problem because you can tell this device, uh, the microcontroller on board, to not pull the voltage of the solar panels down below what you set and it will try to charge your battery without uh, pulling the voltage too low. So in this example I've pressed set and I've gone over here to the 32 volts for the solar panel and uh, I'm going to set it to 32 volts for now. I really don't want my panels to be pulled down below 32 volts. It's two 12 volt panels in series so that'll do for now. Uh, I run other things off those panels and I don't want to pull the voltage too low because uh, solar panels if they're on a DC converter, you can actually cause them to latch. Uh, that's where you pull the voltage down too low and it collapses. And then uh, if you unload the charge controller some, it'll the voltage will stay collapsed. It'll just kind of latch and you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is avoid that point where the PV voltage will collapse. And you may have to experiment to find that. Uh, it may not be too clear. Uh, this unit will not find that for you. You have to know that yourself. So I would say for a 12 volt solar panel, um, which is going to have maybe 20 to 21 volt open circuit. You could try maybe 16, 17 volts and then just experiment up or down from there and uh, see what happens. If you get the voltage wrong or the sun is too weak, the symptoms are this unit will reboot continuously. The voltage will go down on the solar panel side and I'm pointing at it right here. That's the solar panel voltage and suddenly the unit will turn off. The display will go out and it'll come right back on and it'll try to start over. If you see that happening, you need to raise the voltage uh, right here on this setting and you just change it with the arrow keys up and down you can also hold it to move more quickly in my case about 32 volts is good so I'm setting this up for myself so I'll just leave it at 32 volts next you press set and you go into the battery pack voltage in my case I'm charging a 16 cell lithium iron phosphate battery pack so I want about 54 volts and in my case 54.2 volts I'm not really trying to fully charge the battery pack, just get it 80 or 90 percent. And I don't want to have to babysit the charge controller and worry about my expensive batteries. So around 54 volts is good for me. You would just set the voltage of your battery pack here when it's full. Um, it would probably be a good idea to set it slightly below that until you're sure it's working right because it could overshoot the voltage. So definitely test before you go live. Do not leave it unattended with an expensive battery pack. Make sure it's doing the right thing that it's not overshooting the voltage because that could happen. So I've got it set to 54.2 volts. Again, arrow keys up or down. You can hold them to move faster. Once you set your voltage, which again is going to be higher than the input voltage from the solar, it's, a, it's boosting the voltage. Just press set. Then you go into the current. Uh, I would recommend starting out with one amp or half an amp and do your testing with that. Uh, I've got mine set to about one amp, so that'll be good enough. Um, it comes from the factory, I think, at 5 amps. Um, it has a fan in it. It should be able to handle 5 amps, but I always tend to run e equipment below its rated spec just for safety. But 
Um, I recommend starting out with a lower setting just to be safe and you can always increase it later. Alright, now you press set again and you can see the little floppy disk icon with the arrow pointing at it has lit up or been highlighted and I'm using settings group 00. I don't really need to use all the others. One setting group is enough for my particular application. Uh, you can certainly store different settings in the unit but uh, for me I don't need that. So at this point this is where it gets tricky. You don't want to press set, you want to press OK. If you press set it'll just forget everything. So I'm going to press OK, and you see it blink there, and it saved the settings. Now there are still more settings, uh, and in my case, um, there are some other settings I want to change, and they're a little more tricky to access. So the way to get to them is you go to Set, and you keep pressing Set until you come to the current. And this is where you press Set and hold it. Let go, and now it will go into even more settings. And the first one is screen timeout. Now I don't use that, so mine is set to zeros. I want my screen on all the time. I'm not going to change. Uh, I'm not going to change that setting. I mean, there are cases where you might want to. It probably doesn't use much power, so that'd be up to you. If you want the screen to timeout, just set your timeout here. I believe that's minutes and seconds. Press set. Now it's going to go into the ampire setting. Now this one is a bit tricky and a bit finicky. Uh, it's just supposed to show the ampire settings of your battery pack. Um, I just made mine 30 amp hour just to give me something. My pack is actually 60 amp hour, but I'm never going to charge it all the way with this thing. So I just made it 30 amp hour so that the little fuel gauge on there will have something to count against. It'll give me something to look at. I don't really use it. I don't really need it, but it is interesting. Uh, so that would be up to you whether to use this setting or not. All right, press set again. Now you go into the amount of time that it's going to charge. Now again, I don't use this. I don't limit it. I'm not going to set an end time for the charge. I'm just going to leave it all zeros. If you wanted to, you could have the unit turn off after an hour, regardless of the voltage. That could be handy. It depends on your application. Uh, in my case, I don't use that setting, so it's all zeros. So if you press set again, it's going to go into the next icon, which is this little padlock. And that's just whether the, the screen is locked or not, or the buttons are locked. And I just have that unlocked. I don't, I don't need to lock the screen. Uh, your mileage may vary, it depends on what you want. Maybe you don't want someone tampering with the controller. Uh, you could set that as locked. But uh, the information's in the manual. Uh, I don't use it, but I just wanted to include it here. Okay, so after the lock icon, you press set again. And then there's this off or on here. So I'm going to point at it, it's right here. Right now I have it on off. So what this means is when you first power the controller, what does it do? Does it go into boost mode and start charging? Or is it just light up the screen but sit there and wait for you? Now, I always have mine on off, which means that when you apply solar power to this unit, it will power up, the screen will come on, but it will just sit there, and it will be in off mode. It won't be charging, it won't be boosting. Um, by default, when you first give it power, it automatically goes into charge mode, and I don't like that. I don't want it to do that, uh, so I want to manually toggle the controller on and off. So again, it's, it's up to you, uh, whatever setting you prefer. For safety reasons, I'd recommend setting it to off until you're sure uh, everything is working right. That way you would have to do manual intervention to uh, get it to charge if there's maybe some kind of fault or the power was turned off for a while. It's just a safety thing, uh, but that's up to you. All right, now I'm going to hit set again. And once again, it lights up the uh, little hard disk icon or floppy disk icon on setting group 00. And again, you don't press set, you press OK. And you saw it blink there, and now it saved the settings. Okay, so now that the unit has been programmed, what would be the expected behavior? Well, what's going to happen is, when you have this hooked up to a battery, and you feed solar power into it, of course it's going to show on the display at the very top, which is right here, the voltage of your solar panel array. In my case, the display is going to say off, right here where this I'm pointing, because I have it set to be off when you first start the controller. It's not going to charge. So what would happen is it wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. It would just sit there. That's assuming you set this setting to off. Uh, so what you want to do is, uh, if you want to charge, you would press OK. And what will happen is it will go into charge mode. Now this is a bench test, and I'm not really charging a battery. So I'm going to simulate the behavior. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And I hear the fan. And pay attention to the output voltage. You can see it's climbing. So it's going to try to reach 54.2 volts. So this simulates the battery charging. And there you go. It says OK. 
Okay, so it's it's a fake charge. It says okay, it's done. That means it thinks it's full. Uh, the battery isn't actually full. But now you can see what it should do. It should try to get to 54.2 volts. Uh, of course, the input on the solar is 13 volts. So now I'm going to press OK. I'm going to tell it to stop charging. So you should see it attempt to charge the batteries, and the voltage would slowly go up. You would see the current go up. In my test, you didn't see the current go up because it's actually not charging anything. And uh, this is the current right here where it says A for amps. And you'd want to see that go up, hopefully, to the, the current setting that you set. And of course, if your solar panels can't deliver the current, you know, it, it may not go that high and it may uh, struggle, but hopefully we'll put some charge into the battery. So you could just test it, uh, make sure the fan's are running, and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, there's also the watts, which is right here, watt display, and you would see that count up as well. It's just doing a calculation for you. And so in my case, if I was setting it to one amp, I'd be getting about 50 watts if the solar panels were able to deliver that much current. If at any time you want to terminate the charge while the charge controller is charging your battery pack, you would just press the OK button and you'll hear the fan stop and it will stop charging. There are a few more settings you can set. The first is you can reset the microcontroller and reset the current shunt uh, on board. Now I don't need to do that, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You just press uh, the down arrow here while it's in the current mode, which is off, and press and hold it for a while and then let go. You'll see the screen blink and the microcontroller has been reset. Next, if you press and hold the up arrow for a while and then let go, you go into the backlight setting or this display setting. And I usually keep mine right about like that. Um, it doesn't come from the factory set all the way bright. And it depends on what you're looking for. But I think it's nice to include that. It's very thoughtful. And the screen is really nice on this. It's actually one of the best things about the unit is the screen. So I just set mine to about 25% or so. And then go ahead and press set. And now this is supposed to control the fan speed. However, I haven't found this to control the fan speed at all. It doesn't seem to make a difference. I could be wrong, but uh, I just leave it like that. I don't worry about it. Now to close out of these fan speed settings, you just press OK. And it will return you to the main home screen, uh, currently in off mode. Now the fan in this unit is supposed to be rather problematic. Uh, that has been my experience. However, it's a 40 millimeter fan. And all you would have to do is replace it with a similar 40 millimeter fan. You could get a ball bearing fan. The fan that's in there is a 12 volt brushless DC fan. So really it's not a big deal. If you have a problem with the fan, you can just replace it. This is the end of the programming and configuration of this charge controller. I hope this video helps someone. Okay, so I got the charge controller installed in the shed. And this is my lawnmower. And I'm currently charging the lawnmower. And I've just got a cable running from the charge controller. Coming right along here. There's the charge controller. And I'm only getting about 50 watts. I've got it throttled back. Because uh, currently I'm using the solar panels to run uh, shed ventilation also. And here's the shed ventilation. See it's cranking along there in the window. That's the charge controller I replaced. Uh, it still powers on, but it can't boost, and I hope that I'll be able to repair it. Uh, I don't know for sure, but when I'm able to, I'll hopefully be able to open this thing up and work on it and get it working again. I don't use this charge controller to uh, speed charge the mower. It's more of a trickle charge. The most I've ever put through them is about 150 watts or 100 watts. Right now you're doing 50 watts. That's, uh, it's going to take a long time. Um, but the mower is not empty and I need something that charges it but doesn't charge it too fast. And I don't want to have to babysit it. So this is a nice safe slow charge. and. If I need to hurry up and charge the mower, I have another charger that came with it that's faster, and I can plug that in. Let's take a look at the settings. So 54 point, wow, well, that's not focusing very well. 54.2 volts, one amp. And the panels, uh, let's go ahead and stop the charge. 
panels are set at 30 volts right now. Um, I don't want to pull them too low. It's not really an MPPT charge controller, but it, it doesn't matter. It works fine. Start the charge again. So the reason I don't want to pull the panels too low is I'm running the ventilation fan that you just saw. As long as I don't get too greedy and turn it up too high, uh, both of them will run off the same panels and they'll run just fine. Of course when the sun comes, uh, comes behind a cloud it will shut down, but then it will restart. So, so far this has been working for me. I've been doing this for over a year and I can't say I have any complaints. Uh, it gives me a good way to charge without using the grid. I can still run my ventilation fan and other electronics. And it's very slow, very safe. It's not going to overcharge the pack or anything. So I'm pretty happy with it.